Seeing something that you love so dearly change, it's hard. But in my experience, love for a place, it doesn't come from traffic jams, tourist traps, roadside construction, and certainly not crowded city streets. To maybe help explain, let me paint you a picture. Whenever my eyes pan over the cascading peaks of Rocky Mountain National Park, the boyhood memories flood in <laughs> like the Big Thompson after a spring rain. For my family, a mountain day would start hard and fast with a full race against the sun. It was imperative that we got to the trailhead and to our destination before the afternoon crowds choked up the trails. Our efforts were usually rewarded with warm PBJs and if we were lucky, a fish or two. As the afternoon would roll around, we would usually split up where the ladies would go hit the town and dig up the best treasures Essis had to offer. While in the meantime, us boys would overstay our welcome at Moraine Park and harass the locals. The gravity of a hearty home cooked meal back at the cabin would eventually pull us all back together while an evening shadow would slowly cast across the valley. Sticky hands from YMCA ice cream would anxiously grip cameras and binoculars alike in the hopes of spotting the mountain critters in the park's golden hours. By all accounts, it was truly a perfect day. And this, this is what Rocky Mountain means to me. That all seems like such a long time ago. And it's so funny how memory works. The beautiful, the great aspects are always highlighted. But I'm not here to rag on the, yeah, not so savory parts of a popular mountain town like Essex, no. I'm here to show you guys the wilder side of Rocky Mountain. Getting off the trail a little bit, going the extra mile to get to, well, <laughs> the wilderness. So folks, I would like to welcome you to the Front Range.
This is where I really start to regret not bringing two rods. There's a deep, deep hole over there, and, and we've had a couple looks. I just, uh, I don't know, they're not keying in on the dry fly as much as I thought. So, I think right now, I'm gonna eat some lunch, some PBJs just like mom made. <laughs> Let this pool sit for a bit, and then I might I might put on a dry dropper just to just to see, you know. I mean, this is uh, this is a really really good pool. I don't know how many other opportunities we're gonna get. Cheers. Well, as typical of Estes Park, in the time it took us to re-rig and eat a little lunch, the afternoon rainstorms are already on their way. Let's uh let's hope this gamble pays off. Now, even though technically these are considered greenback cutthroat, there is some genetic variation, so they're not pure, pure greenback cutthroat. The snobs out there will love to do one of these and say, well, actually, <laughs> but they have the characteristics of a greenback cutthroat, and they are so gorgeous, man. So gorgeous. You know, I couldn't quite tell why these pocket water greenbacks were being so stingy, but they were. So I didn't feel too bad heading back to the trail especially after that last nice fish. As much as it might pay me to say, we are leaving the creek. This was only ever gonna be a little little stop along the way. We've got a bunch of other stuff to do before we can start heading our way to the trailhead. And yeah, there'll be plenty of more fish to come, so no worries there. Let's get this all broken down and get off this trail. Well, in true Rocky Mountain fashion, it has begun to rain, giving us a nice bath on this hike out. I can use it, I'll tell you that. As the rain set in, we set our sights south. Our final destination was the Wild Basin Trailhead, and that was a fair drive down the road. Along the way, I couldn't help myself, so I had to make a few quick stops at my absolute favorite places in town. It really amazes me how certain places can immediately bring me back to that same boyhood, ornery feeling like I had when I was little. With a few hours of good light left, I had just enough time to walk around Lily Lake. It was nice to feel the cool rain and make a few friends with the local residents. But that rain showed no sign of stopping, and the sun was starting to set, so it was time to find a place to sleep. The real adventure would start in the morning. We are 10 toes down in Wild Basin. I've gone ahead and decided to go ahead of the group. I'm the vanguard on this day's, <laughs> this day's adventure. They're kind of getting ready, getting staged, so I figured I'll go on ahead. No worries there. But we've got a decent little hike to get to Thunder. Once we get there, man, fingers crossed we can get on some fish.
Oh, I think it's gonna be buggy. Like I said, I went ahead of the group, so I'm the first one here. I'm gonna get mine and my dad's camp set up and hopefully get everything squared away. So water, food put away, the whole camp dealio before they even get here. How dumb are those? <laughs> As I started to reconfigure camp, the rest of the crew was slowly starting to trickle in. And again, I couldn't quite help myself, so as they were setting up, I beelined it to the lake. Well, the fishing has been painfully, painfully slow. I've had one follow, otherwise this side of the lake, I don't know what the hell's going on. I figured it'd be money with this nice rock structure and whatnot, but it is still high in the afternoon. It's just a little after three. I'm thinking as soon as that sun goes down and this water loses the chop, we might, we might get into some more fish, but I, I, so far, so grind. <laughs> Golly. Looks like there's quite a few fish stacked up in the inlet. This might be my best chance I've had all day <laughs> to try and catch some fish. See if they like this uh, little midge boy I got on. Sweet baby Jesus. That is such a nice fish. Alrighty, one last two hander on the guy and we're gonna we're gonna send him back. That is what we got him on, just a really small, subtle brown midge emerger pattern. Didn't know if that was gonna work, but it did, and that's that is so fantastic. Breaking the skunk with quite possibly my biggest, oh no, that was 100% my biggest high alpine cutty of the season, man. That was fantastic. No flipping way on the crackle back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Off the top of my head, I can't remember the fellow who sent me all those flies, but he's a Missouri boy just like myself. You know who you are. Thank you so flipping much. That was on your crackleback, man. That is so cool. Come on, floppy boy. Just want to show the people the crackleback. Look at that. Oh, I cannot believe the crackleback. That's so wild. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get you one more two-hander on this guy. He's really clean. There we go. That is a beautiful flipping fish. Okay, let's get him back. That is the crackleback, ladies and gentlemen. And that holds a whole lot of whole lot of esteem in the great state of Missouri. And uh, it seems to be working. High, high up in the Rockies too, man. That's so sick. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Yo, 
this one's beautiful! On the Crackly Crackle Baxter. That is so flippin' hilarious. Look at that fish, that's so cool. Oh. Did you see how beautiful that fish was? Come on, man. Now that we had a couple really nice fish to our name, I could go back to camp with my head held high and not feel like a complete loser. It was time to make a quick bite to eat and then turn right back around. Conditions at the lake were primed and ready for a spectacular eating bite. And there was no way I was missing out on that. Guess we're having a little bit of fish line for dinner. <laughs> As these cutties keep rising and that sun keeps setting, I think I need to scoot. Fishing really picked up here towards the end. And I will say, it has been a grinder session. We we worked really hard this afternoon and things started to pick up towards five and then boom, as soon as that sun hit the ridge, it was amazing, it was incredible. But I gotta say, I haven't done the best job of showing the group dynamic so far. I'm here with a big group of backpackers the only issue is, is some folks aren't feeling too hot. And I don't want to be shoving a camera in their face asking them, hey, what did you get them on? <laughs> Maybe not today. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow is just as jam-packed as today was, if not more. But for now, it was time to hike back and get some much-needed rest. As the jet wheels started sounding off, we had a bad case of slow movers and no movers. It took a lot of coffee for this crew to get up and moving to get ready for the day's activities. Making my way down to the lake, it was quite disappointing to see how choppy the water already was for being this early in the morning. So I decided to take my talents down to the outlet to see what I couldn't conjure up. Like I said, she saw some fish rising in here. Oh, uh, Rachel had two or three hits in there yesterday. Yeah. Like, if she says no, it's gonna be a buzzer. <laughs> 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 
I'm going. Just, we're going. Just don't we have to go. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. All right, you got your filet knife? This here fellowship started the Tolkien-esque march up and over the Misty Mountain. With little more than a goat path to follow, we all kept single file and made sure to stick close. But the up and down nature of this trail is somewhat misleading at times, especially when the path would just straight up disappear over rock outcroppings. If it weren't for GPS and a good line leader, I could see how one might deviate from the path and inevitably miss the mark. But luckily for us, fate was on our side. Eager legs and burning lungs carried this crew up and over the pass and to our final destination for the day. In rather good time, I might add. I tell you, mixed emotions would be the best way to describe how it felt to lay eyes on this little lake. For some, it was like seeing an old friend. Others, it was like meeting a celebrity. And a few, eh, I would say just short of indifferent. The not so local locals were up and active in this morning sunlight, making their presence known. Now, Box Lake is only known to hold Eastern brook trout. These non-natives first started showing up in Rocky Mountain in the late 1800s, mostly to support recreational activities like what we're doing today. Many lakes and streams throughout the park have a robust, wild population of these colorful little char. However, the rest pale in comparison to a Box Lake Brookie, and let's just say, that's a fact. While I got done taking a much needed bath, excited hands fumbled to get their rods all rigged up. And before I even had a chance to drip dry, folks had already started catching fish. And so the frenzy began. Any fisherman out there watching this has heard the age old saying, well, especially when the fishing's hard. <laughs> it goes as follows. Well, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Well, here at Box Lake, it's called catching. <laughs> Believe me if I said it was almost a fish on every cast. For someone else to say, I can live my life. My There got to be a point in the day where my dad and I started playing what I like to call fly roulette. Picking a random fly out of your box and tying it on just to see if they would actually eat anything you threw out there. And spoiler alert, <laughs> they did. <laughs> Yeah, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is two fish with one cast.
It should be said that in a lake like Box, available resources are relatively scarce and the growing season for these fish is super short. From day one, these fish have to compete tooth and fin with each other in order to make it to the size they are. So taking a few fish out of the lake will help reduce the overall competition and allow for other fish to potentially grow bigger. This is also why the Colorado Fish and Game Department has a daily bag limit of 10 for these non-native berkeys. That's 10 per person, folks. To make this shore lunch dream a reality, we needed a bag of brookies. With newfound purpose, my dad and I put the hammer down and quickly gathered up a healthy bag for the folks on the other side of the lake. Doug dad and I had to dust off the old fillet skills and get to work on lunch. Now, these weren't exactly the biggest fish in the world, so all you really need to do is gut them, remove the head, and most importantly, clean out that bloodline. Just a few slippery knife strokes later, we all came out unscathed and were ready to start cooking lunch. The smell of crackling brookies in the afternoon air gathered a crowd quick. With nothing but basic seasonings and propane heat, Dad posted up and ran the finest cookery this side of Fall River Road. That first batch of crispy Cajun brookies were given a weary eye, but as soon as one brave soul jumped in, the rest followed suit. Laughing, crunching, hemming and hawing were all followed by the pleasantly surprised response of, yeah, I'll have another. Round after round of crispy little trout were passed around until everyone had had more than their fill. Discarded brookie bones would have been the only tangible evidence to any passerby that this crew had made the trip to the hallowed lake. We had just enough time to clean up and pick the last bones out of our teeth before we felt the wind shift. Now, you have to understand that a mountain does not care to listen to the opinion of a calendar. It might be a hot July in flatland country, but here in the mountains, no, they don't play by those rules. The wind was snappy and cold, like a tight rope pulling something heavy. As the clouds crept closer over the ridge, so too did a deep sense of melancholy. We had all accomplished so much, all the packing, and planning, physical prep, and not to mention the group coordination that makes something like this happen. All the excitement, anticipation, anxiety, it had all been realized. It made my heart heavy to imagine that this lonely mountainside would probably never see this party again. For a lot of folks, this was their first time making it to Box Lake. And for some, it might be their last. I should be happy that we made it here, right? Should make me sad that it's all over, but it does. There's no doubt that these are the kind of thoughts I'm gonna be wrestling with well after this hike is over. One hike and a few hundred brookies later, Doug, Dad, and I decided to set up shop on those same cozy boulders from earlier. Doug and I proceeded to watch my dad and Uncle Mike put on an absolute cutthroat clinic for the next few hours. Who would have ever thought that big, white, chubby Chernobyls would be the ticket for the day? While I was catching nothing but a little sun, it was a whole lot of fun watching these two absolutely clean up. Didn't really seem to matter where they were casting, the fish were going out of their way to attack those chubbies. Now late in the fourth quarter, I managed to score with a snub-nosed cutty that was a little bit camera shy. With pretty menacing looking clouds coming over the horizon, we all clambered back up to camp and tried to make dinner before the downpour started. And when the skies finally opened up, some of us were prepared, others not so much. Bellies full, we rode out this downpour the best way we know how. Good old Elijah Craig and Maker's Mark have a certain way of turning that damp and cold into cozy and warm.
Even though this had been a long day for everyone, there was still a select few of hungry fishermen looking to get on some evening action. And as bad as that storm might have been, it brought an unbelievable stillness to the entire lake. Now, there was a price to pay. With that still came the chill. Even though it was getting really cold, the fishing was heating up. Getting to sight fish these beautiful cutties in the evening light like this, it was second to none. It was so much fun. After we'd catch one, we'd usually spook the pool for a little while. But luckily for us, there would be some more hungry cutties moving in to the inlet to get on that evening bite. They weren't exactly eager to eat, but a few well-placed casts with the right fly made for a nice evening treat. With all the fishing I do, you'd think I'd be used to it, but every time I catch one of these just gems, I'm always awestruck at just the true beauty of these high alpine cutthroat. As my dry fly luck was slowly starting to wear thin, I decided to put on a leech. Stripping in a leech is a great way to get on those aggressive fish, and let me tell you, we found more than a few. They seem to be sitting right at the drop off where the inlet ends and the lake begins. You would cast out, and after the first few strips, you'd see a dark shadow, maybe even two, following your leech in. It really all makes complete sense. The drop off point right after the inlet is a perfect staging point for any hungry cutthroat looking for some bait fish that are slipping up in this evening light. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. So in the waning twilight of this Rocky Mountain evening, I took my earnings and ran. We had to get back to camp and get some rest. We had a long hike out. With a group effort, we were able to get camp cleaned up, everything packed up, and ready for our pending hike out. Nothing too terribly significant happened on this hike down. I will say, tired legs carried tired bodies all the way back down to that trailhead. So as this story is coming to a close, I think I'll take this opportunity to say thank you so much for watching. And hopefully after this, you got to see a wilder side of well, the park. So as always, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. And wherever you end up, make sure to keep those feet in the water. Until next time, tight lines. Well, if you were seeing this, that means you've made it to the end of the video. And that also means I've got a gnarly hike out of this massive valley. But before I boot scoop boogie my way out of here, I just gotta say, if you're binging all the fly out season content, can't get enough, well I got good news. Two things, first, the Instagram. You know, fishy pics, all the fishy videos, we'll do giveaways every now and again, it's a lot of fun and I'm always willing to talk, so if you got questions, hit me up, it's, it's always good. And then second, second would be the Discord or the Cord. This is a whole lot of fun and it's growing super, super fast. So get over there now and be an OG, right? <laughs> we do this monthly fly of the month contest and it is so awesome. Every month, the competition just keeps getting better and better and better. And I will say this month's winner, good God almighty, that thing is a dimey dime. That would be absolutely perfect for a high country adventure just like this. <laughs> So with that being said, go check out the Instagram, go check out the Discord. If you haven't yet, toss a sub down. I would really appreciate it. So with that, <laughs> I got to scoot. See you next time.